Welcome and hello. This is a support video for HECRAS. And in this, this support video, I'm going to be talking about the hydraulic properties table. If you're in HECRAS and you've tried to access the hydraulic properties table by going up to view hydraulic properties table, and you get an error message on this screen here, I'm going to show you how to rectify or to correct that problem. Now the user's manual does have an issues page or this is a separate known issues document, apparently, or um, I'm working in HECRAS version 6.6. .6, so if uh, this issue has already been resolved for your version of HECRAS, you may not need to watch this video. I'll leave a link to this page in the description, but the issue that we want to resolve here is this one here, hydraulic property table plot crashes. And the workaround is to associate a terrain to the geometry with the problem. You can associate an empty terrain as a workaround. All right, so that's what we're going to demonstrate. First, I'll demonstrate the problem. I'll build out a quick, real simple model, unsteady flow, run it, show you the problem, and then we'll go into RAS Mapper, create a train, associate it with the geometry file, rerun the model, and then be able to show these hydraulic property tables. Before we can do anything, I'll go ahead and start from the beginning. So I'll create a project, navigate to where I want to save that project, give the project a name. I'll just call it support one and OK. Okay. All right. Geometric data. Let's go ahead and sketch out a reach. Give that reach a name and the river a name. All right. Now let's go ahead and define some cross sections. So adding a cross section at the bottom of the reach first. Uh, we need some station elevation data. I'll just add that there. Downstream length will be zero. Manning's values will be 0 0.05 and 0 0.03 for the overbank and the main channel respectively. Then let's see, we want 60 and 150 for the left and right overbank stations based on this channel data. Okay, so here's the cross section. I'm going to make another cross section at the upstream end of the reach. So copy current cross section. I'll just say 1,000 feet upstream. Okay. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. And if we're going to go with like maybe a 0.1% slope, then I want to increase the elevation one foot every 1,000 feet of run. All right. Next one I want to do is just add some intermediate cross sections so it looks a little more normal. And one every, say, 100 feet is pretty normal. Okay, so let me go ahead and just type in 100 feet, interpolate, and close. All right, let's go ahead and create a flow file now. This is unsteady flow. For the downstream boundary conditions, I'll go ahead and just use the normal depth, which uh, I'll type in the slope for the energy grade line or the, the channel bottom. 0 0.001 is my 1% slope. And then for the upstream boundary condition, I'll use a flow hydrograph. I'll just set it to the simulation time here. The interval will be, how about three hours? We'll start it small, like at maybe 100, 2,000, 2,500. Actually, I'm going to make the last two, say 4,000. OK. And then let's go ahead and save that. So OK, file, save the unsteady flow data. I'll say 100 to 4,000 CFS will be the name. All right. Close that. All right, next we want to create a plan. So that's this button here, or run unsteady flow analysis. The geometry file, oops, I still need to save that. Let me get just call it the base file, or maybe 1% slope, or 0.1% slope. So I'll just go 0.1% slope. OK. All right, let's go back to the, our unsteady flow analysis. We have our geometry file, our unsteady flow file. I'm going to go ahead and run these processes. Let's go ahead and start it at the beginning of the year. And the start time will be 0, 0.00 hours. And then we'll go 24 hours. So I'll just go to January 2. I'm going to go ahead and change the output to something like 15 minutes. OK, that looks good. So file, save plan. I'm going to name the plan here, the slope, and then the flow. So same thing for the short ID. And then compute. OK, so that looks successful. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's quickly look at some results, but not the hydraulic properties table yet. So cross section data. This is at the top of the reach at River Station 1000. Let's just go ahead and animate those flows. So it starts at 100 CFS and then over time does the flow rate increase. So does that water surface elevation. And the animation is about half done right now. So it looks like we're going to get a little bit of flow in the overbank section. And then the final flow rate of 4000 CFS is right here at elevation about 43. Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate the error now. That's the whole point of this video. View hydraulic properties table and boom, we get this error message, a very cryptic error message that doesn't really 
help the user define or fix the problem. But that's what this video is about. So let's go ahead and close this, close this, and go to RAS Mapper. So I'm going to save my project before I do. All right, GIS Tools, RAS Mapper. You know what we want to do to create a terrain layer is just uh, click on Projects and then Create New RAS Terrain. Okay, it's it's whining about a spatial reference. Just click no to that. And then at the bottom, you can click this Create Empty. So I'm going to do that. And now we have this terrain right here. It's an empty terrain. There's nothing to it. Obviously, you would have situations where you want a terrain, but in this video, all we want to do is fix that hydraulic properties table button. I'm going to go ahead and rename it, though. So rename layer, empty terrain. OK, and then I'll click OK. OK, thank you. Now I want to associate that terrain with the geometry file. So to do that, I'm going to click on, let's see, uh, right click on map layers and then manage geometry association, manage layer associations box. Here's the geometry, and then here's the results associated with the plan. And it looks like it automatically assigned that that terrain file to the geometry because it's the only terrain file that there is. So I think that's automatic. Another way to get to this manage layer associations is to go up to the project and then manage layer associations. OK, so two different ways to get to the same dialog box. I think we're done here in RAS Mapper. So I'm just going to file, save, and then close. Now with the unsteady flow analysis box still open, I'm going to go ahead and just click compute once again. OK, so that's done. I'll click close. Now let's go up to view and hydraulic properties tables. Boom, problem solved. All right, so what we have in the hydraulic properties tables here, uh, by default, it's three separate plots. You can see we have the station area and conveyance versus elevation. This is at river station 1000, river A reach one. So we can change the river station like that. We can toggle on and off these plots as well as the table data. So if I wanted to toggle off the, the plot, you can just click on that down here and then boom, there's nothing. If I wanted to click toggle on the last plot for conveyance versus elevation, then you just click on that plot. If I wanted to see the table for that same plot, then here's that table data. OK, so anyway, you can also toggle on different plans and you have a few different options. Uh, the content of this video was not to talk about this feature too much, but just to get it going. So that's uh, that's how you need to do it. You need to go into RAS Mapper, create a terrain, associate it with that geometry file, and then rerun the simulation. And then, of course, you can access that data by either going to the view hydraulic properties tables like we just did, or there's also a button here at the top of your main file GUI that says HT right here, hydraulic property table plots, and boom, that's the, the same data right there. Hope that was helpful.